That is so cool and so fast. Oh, I am excited for today's video because we are diving into the world of CO2 lasers. Thanks to Adam Stack who have sent over their brand new Hurricane CO2 laser for me to test out today. And this is something I have wanted to do and learn about for a really long time. So I say, let's roll the intro, start to talk about unpacking and some tips that I've got for you on Startup. Adam Stack have been big in the diode laser scene for quite some time and they've decided to take the plunge with the Hurricane and enter the CO2 market and I'm excited to test it today and share my experience. This is not just going to be your standard review, we're going to do some really fun projects and really put it through its paces. But in terms of unboxing, it's just like every other laser you've probably seen be unboxed. There's tons of foam to protect the laser so that it's not going to get damaged in transport and the laser itself actually comes fully assembled out of the box. You then got the option to purchase some additional accessories like this riser and the conveyor belt so that you can do larger projects as well as a fume extractor so that if you are operating an inside enclosed space or a small workshop you can have the fume extractor to help get rid of some of those fumes. Now the only downside in terms of the unboxing is the number or the amount of rubbish that it leaves behind. When it comes to materials that your laser can cut and engrave, honestly, it's overwhelming because the list seems endless. But I'm gonna make a couple of projects today highlighting some materials that you may not necessarily realize that you can cut and engrave. One of the biggest advantages of CO2 over a diode has to do with acrylic. A diode machine can cut and engrave black, but that is it. With a CO2 machine, your world is endless. You can cut and engrave any color, including clear, on the machine. So the first project we're going to do is create some nameplates. I'm also going to throw in some plywood because I want to test that out. But let's dive in and start creating. Just finished making my first couple of acrylic projects and to say I am hooked on cutting acrylic would be an understatement. The Hurricane has a 55 watt head which means it can cut through the acrylic as well as plywood like butter and ridiculously quickly. I did make the name plaques like I said I was going to but I couldn't stop there. I also made these keychains for some kids with some different colored acrylic that's 3 mil and layered. This keychain is like 50 mil long by about 15, 20 mil high. You are talking 40 seconds in total, 20 seconds per color and you have yourself a keychain. I am blown away with how fast the machine can work. I can't keep up with it, but I am going to put the acrylic down and put it aside for the time being because I'm going to move on to test the next material. The next material up on the workbench for testing are these metal bottle openers. And what I really like about these ones in particular is that they've got a black coating on them. It's gonna be perfect for the laser because I can laser off that black coating, revealing the stainless steel underneath. And to make sure they're aligned correctly in the laser, I'm gonna use some three mil plywood to make myself a template so that I can pop each one in as I go. And this is gonna be a really great test for the camera in particular because I have got some designs that run right to the edge of the bottle opener. So we'll be able to see whether or not I've got those settings dialed in just where they need to be. But that's enough talking, let's go ahead and make a template and start to make some cool bottle openers.
openers have come up fantastic. I'm really happy with the result. Something that always surprises me with lasers is just the detail you can get on tiny lettering. Some of these designs have got really tiny words and you can very clearly see what it says with the laser engraving, which is a really great result. I did have to make a couple of adjustments in terms of using the camera just to get the designs to run all the way to the edge of the bottle openers, but overall I was really happy with it. Now I did about 15, it took about a minute each side and I did them one at a time, but the laser has a work area of 500 by 300 so you could very easily put a whole bunch in there and batch out your designs fairly quickly. I do have a couple of tips for you though if you are working with metal often when it comes off the laser they are filled with dust. The best way I have found to clean them and to really get your engravings to pop and shine is with some barkeeper's friend and a magic sponge. They come up really really nice and another thing if you are going to batch out a bunch of projects like this and your bottle openers come in plastic or anything like this keep it don't throw it out because when you're posting them off to your clients you can put them back in there to protect them during transport but i'm going to put these down because i'm excited to move on to project number three in researching for this project there is a material that i just kept coming back to that i was really excited to try out so this next project is going to incorporate that product and it's an acrylic made by romark and the best thing about this stuff is that it's two-tone acrylic because one of the challenges of acrylic is when you're engraving it, it's actually seeing what the engrave is. Because the acrylic's the same color all the way through, it's not until you're right up on top of the acrylic that you can see what the engrave is, with the exception of being black acrylic. This stuff is a game changer. It's designed that you're going to engrave the top layer off and then you will reveal a different color underneath. And you can get it in a bunch of different colors. You can get stuff that looks like metal, engrave the top off, and then you have a white or a black underneath. Or you can get different color combinations when again, you're going to engrave that top color off and then you could have a white or a black underneath. I'm really excited to try this product out. So we're going to make some keychains. I'm also going to incorporate some leather because I want to test that on the laser as well. A little bit of a side note on the leather, you want to make sure you do your research to use leather that is safe on a laser. Sometimes leather can incorporate nasty chemicals like PVC and you don't want to be lasering that. So make sure you do your research before you go and put leather in your laser. I am using laserable leather by Romark so that I know that it is safe, but let's dive into the project and make some really cool keychains. Two-tone acrylic is really cool and honestly the possibilities are endless. I'm really happy with this cool little keychain that I've been able to make. The only downside of the acrylic is that it's only 1.6 mil in its thickness. So if you're wanting to do something like a keychain, I would suggest doubling it up just to make it really strong. I don't think this is going to snap. It seems really robust. And I've taken advantage of using the leather on the other side so I can put my logo and the machine lasers and cuts the leather really, really nice. For the image that is on the front, the only thing I did was I increased the DPI to about 300. That meant that I got really nice crisp results. I'm really, really happy with it. I think these are so cool and I just am overwhelmed with how much I can do with it. A couple of tips for you to clean it. I used this glitz glue and stain remover. That cleaned the dust off the acrylic really, really quickly and it came up really nice. 
to glue the two pieces of acrylic together. I have been using this 450 quick adhesive. I got it from an art store here in town, which is Eckersley's, but it works really, really good. And it's quick drying, which I really like. I think you could also use CA glue, but I think this will create a stronger bond over a longer period of time. So really happy with that. Also works on the leather, so I only had to use the one glue to be able to glue it all together. Now, before I tell you who I think this machine is perfect for, we're gonna quickly run through the accessories that you can get with the machine. And then we're also going to run through some startup tips because I did have some issues on startup and I want to troubleshoot those with you so that I can get you up and started even quicker and then I'm going to tell you my final thoughts and who I think the machine is perfect for. accessory I want to show you is this conveyor belt option and this increases your work area to 800 by 500 but what I think is cool about it is not only does it allow you to do those larger projects but it also allows you to do smaller projects on larger sheets which is going to save you on wastage. One of the downsides of having a laser enclosed like this is you're then governed as to what size sheets you can get in to do your projects which often means you have to cut things down and you're guessing which is going to increase your wastage. What you can do is take your larger sheets, use the conveyor belt option and then that way you're not having to cut it down and you can still do those small projects maximizing what you can put on a single sheet of acrylic or any other material for that matter. The next accessory may sound strange but it is a must and that is software. To operate a laser you're going to need a piece of software. Now traditionally I have used Lightburn, I really like it, I'm familiar with it and it connects to every laser that I have in the workshop but if you don't want to go down the paid route of Lightburn, Atomstack has its own studio so right out of the box you can download the free software and be up and running in no time. The other upside of the Atomstack software is that you can download it before you even push purchase on the laser and have a play around with it, make some designs and see whether or not getting into lasering is for you. The next accessory I want to tell you about is the Atom Stack air purifier and if you are going to get a laser I think this is an almost must have accessory. It's designed to take all the fumes out of the laser, run it through a bunch of filters in this box and blow out nice and clean air. It's not going to get rid of 100% of the fumes and the dust but it will get rid of about 80 or 90% of it. I would still recommend having doors open, fans on and even wearing a mask if that's something you want to do but this has worked really well for me during my testing and I would recommend it. If if you are going to be especially in an enclosed workspace but to be honest just about wherever you are using the laser I think this could be handy. The first startup tip I want to give you has to do with using the cable to connect your laser to your laptop. If you are using the supplied cable, this may apply to you, but it may also apply with any cable that you're using. It's just good to be aware of it. Originally, when I was trying to connect it, I had the end that is USB-C and USB connected to the laser and then the USB end at the laptop, but I actually needed to have it the other way around. The one that needed to be connected to the computer was the one that was both USB-C and USB, and as soon as I had it around that way, the light burn software had no issues on picking up the laser. The next startup tip I have for you has to do with the inbuilt camera. A lot of CO2 lasers and the Amstack is no different is that it has an inbuilt camera which is a fantastic feature because it means you can cut down on your wastage because you can align your project just where you want it on your material and you don't have to send the laser head out a hundred times to frame your project to get it in the right position. But you do have to run through a process in Lightburn to dial in the camera and to do that Amstack send over this dot card for you to do this, but there is a right and a wrong way to set the dots up. You want to pay attention in Lightburn to how the dots are laid out in comparison to how you have it laying in front of the camera. The other thing you want to do is have it stuck down to something that makes sure the card stays really flat. You don't want to have any of the corners turned up or anything like that because the camera will have trouble seeing all of the dots. The other thing has to do with the light sources. So Atomstack have lights in here, which is awesome because you can see your material, you can see what you're doing. But the downside is along with these lights, as well as some of the lights you probably have in your workshop or room, it can create reflection onto the dots and the camera can have trouble picking up all of those dots. So just simply keep some of the cardboard that you have from your packaging so that you can block out those lights just while you're doing the alignment and getting everything dialed in. You may even have to hold it up just to cover the light source coming in to stop any reflection on those dots. Then once you've got it all dialed in, it's a really, really neat feature. Makes everything so much quicker and you just cut down on the wastage. I've got one more tip, which might not be a tip, but it's something that I didn't know because I've come from the world of diodes. So let's talk about the water that you need to put in the CO2 and 
If you're new to CO2 machines or like me, you're coming from a diode machine, something that I didn't know is that they require water to be put into the machine to keep the laser tube cool during operation. But you can't just put regular tap water in. You need to make sure that it is distilled water or demineralized water. And if you live in a country that has below freezing temperatures, you want to read the manual because you may be required to put in some antifreeze to stop the water from freezing. And to fill it up, it's really easy. You just take the fuel cup off the side and it comes with a funnel so that you can easily get the water in. And up the top on the display, it has a red light so that you know that it requires to be filled. And then once you hit the right level, it will turn blue so you know you've got enough water. Apart from that, the startup is actually really easy, but I wanted to run through some of those hiccups that I had so that I could help you with the troubleshooting and get you up and running quickly. Overall, the Atomstack Hurricane CO2 machine has been an absolute pleasure to use. Other than a couple of startup issues that I had, which I was able to troubleshoot really quickly, this guy has not skipped a beat. I have been using it for the last two weeks solidly. I've made a bunch of projects that you've seen me do today, but I've also made a ton behind the scenes as I start to learn and understand the machine. The only drawback that I can come up with on this machine honestly has to do with its size. It's a very large desktop laser. Unlike a diode that you can generally pick up and move around and find somewhere to store even on a wall you're not going to be able to do that with this machine you are going to have to find a permanent home which is a downside but I think the upsides outweigh it what I underestimated coming especially from the diode world is just how cool and awesome acrylic is to work with you can get it in every color imaginable and a bunch of different combinations, even making things look like metal and timber, which I just think is really cool. And I've really enjoyed making a bunch of projects with different acrylics. Now, who do I think this machine is for? I think this is for a person that is looking to move up from a diode machine or someone that is looking to start a side hustle but doesn't want to invest in a really expensive machine. CO2 machines traditionally have been really expensive, but I think the Hurricane is going to start to bridge the gap as it's probably going to sit somewhere between those expensive CO2 machines and a high-end diode. I have really, really liked it. And if you are looking to pick yourself up one, I will leave purchase links down in the description below. I will let you know if you use those links, it does help out the channel and I thank you for that. I also want to say a really large thank you to Adam Stack for sending over a CO2 machine for me to try out. I'm excited to continue to make projects. Now, I hope you have found this video helpful. If you have, you can help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons and I hope to see you on the next one.